The delegates of this year's Conservative Conference have been told not to walk around Manchester with these on. In case something happens. Close, isn't it? Welcome to a very big occasion. The Conservatives' first conference as a majority party of government in almost 20 years. These people walk calmly and slowly. The assurance of uh, those who know they've got the upper hand. The spectacle of power can often be very absurd. Here I am holding a little flag with stability written on it. Listen it, and nothing's going to stop us now by Starship. I am so proud to open this conference. We've always had such a warm and helpful welcome from this great city. Get out of my sisters! I get no Well, we're a couple of poor uh, uh, austerity measures, obviously. I'm an unemployed, frustrated young man. Enough is enough. Do you understand why people vote Conservative? Self-interest. Do you understand why working class people vote Tory? No. Brainwashing. They're being fed lies by the Mur Murdoch press. I don't think they realise what the Tory party were going to do. Why do people vote Conservative? Mm. Love of country. People feel more secure. If they want to work hard and have a better future for themselves. We are now the workers' party. <laughs> oh yeah, and I laughed a lot. Working people are having their working tax credit uh, cut and they won't be able to pay their rents. What do you think the Tories, the political right, gets wrong about human beings? Well, I think Thatcher said it all when she didn't believe in society. What do you think the left doesn't get? People. <laughs> people? Wow. <laughs> Most people are decent people, but they manage to find the, the, the tiny bit in everybody that's a really dark wrong bit that just thinks sod the rest of them I'm just looking out for myself. They think that we're more free with more government. They see themselves above everybody else. They think we want to be like them. I don't think that they get that individuals are individuals and they don't like being told what to do. <laughs> but if you were on benefits at the moment you might feel the Conservatives were giving you what for and telling you what to do. But I'm not. What if they carry on winning? What if they carry on winning? Um, I don't know. I'll move to Iceland or somewhere. <laughs> the noise out there is a constant presence here, but inside could be more different. It pains me to say this, but this is all about power. It's about a party convincingly staking a claim to own in the future. It gleams. It's all built around some very, very clear messaging. I mean, just look at this stuff. There's some things the Tories have taken from way beyond the political right, like the living wage. There's some of their old tunes that they've revived, like the right to buy. They've taken back things from Labour after Labour stole them, like the idea of one nation. It feels like someone has built a big political mountain. George Osborne. Yay. His is a vision of Britain full of new railways and runways, where you should work as hard as possible, maybe even harder than the Chinese, and ideally, Build things. The future favours the bold. We've got to be the builders, the people with the new ideas, the people open to the new thinking, ready to listen, admit when we get it wrong. Some people stand on the sidelines, some want to knock things down. We are the builders. <laughs> Despite that sense of power and confidence, there are a few things that might cause the Tories to come a cropper. One of them is what this pan fringe meeting is about, Europe. We must believe if we want to have a more prosperous country. Then there's the looming prospect of the party trying to style itself as being on the side of workers, taking their working tax credits away. But there's a third problem, perhaps more difficult to fix. Membership of the Conservative Party is getting older, it's getting smaller. The average age of a Conservative Party member is 59. Oh, a bit lower than I thought, <laughs> but it's... <laughs> We need to connect a lot more with the electorate. We need to connect an awful lot more uh, to the north of England, for sure. And uh, we need to start bringing people in. Younger uh, people? Younger, oh yeah, younger people. So, to me, age is, it's literally just a number. The problem is, if you've got an ageing membership base, then once you're out of power and you have to renew yourself, that's much more difficult. That happened to the Labour Party. I think that you underestimate the number of young people who are conservative. Do you feel envious in any way though? All that energy envious. and noise that, that's being created by those people? I'm not at all envious of Corbyn. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. There are a lot of places in the north where 
a conservative voice other than Councillor and MP just doesn't exist. The only meeting where we find people talking about the Conservative Party beyond Westminster is this one. Corbyn made people feel good. And the SNP in Scotland makes people feel good against all the facts of how terrible they are. So there's parallels there that we need to learn something from. I think there is a challenge for this party, which is how do we get people to join the party? These new members are going to be engaged with all the things that's in the 80s. Paul Goodman used to be a Tory MP. He's now in charge of Conservative Home, the online voice of Tory activists. With the Labour Party at the moment, you have tens of thousands of people who've joined it. There's a sense of a movement there, but no real sense of talking about power and all that stuff, right? And here, there's the confidence of power, but we both know that the membership of the Conservative Party is shrinking and it's getting older. Lord Feldman, the now the new and sole chairman, did seem to admit that if it's not shrinking, it's certainly ageing and they're worried about it. They talk in private about papering over the cracks. It doesn't look like it much here where they look like a, we look like a party of government. But you know, to me, this doesn't feel like a, you know, a primary gathering of party members, old or young. It feels more like a corporate event. You know, you cannot survive forever. On, on falling membership. It'll hollow out, it'll be replaced by something else, ultimately. You've got one minute for The Guardian, sir. I'm sorry, not right now, just a bit late. Sorry. Okay. That's what it's like here. Guys, I'm so sorry, could I maybe just to the prior minute? Oh, just when you... No one ever tells me anything. Can I just see your badge? On the inside of such a tightly controlled, slick show of power, it's easy to doubt whether being a mass movement in the real world really matters at all. In fact, Maybe it's the last thing these people want. To see that the Labour Party has been piratically captured in a kind of social media twit storm by what Harold Wilson once called a small group of politically motivated men. Trots and militants with vested interests and indeed interesting vests. It's easy to mock the big movement behind Jeremy Corbyn. Too easy, maybe. It does highlight a hidden weakness of the shrinking, ageing Conservative Party. But right now, they're not bothered about that stuff. In the same way that the Labour Party's not really talking about questions of power, this lot aren't talking about mainstream politics and a quiet crisis and its lack of roots in the real world. Might hit them all when they leave power, but right now they're in their imperial phase. Last time that lasted for about 18 years. But to end on a positive note, cheer up. Might be all over by 2027. We've come to the annual rally put on by the Blairites from Progress, who are obviously bruised by what's happened. We have got to draw a line under the kind of behaviour that says it's okay to go around calling people in this room Tories 